Welcome to Learn, Do, Become Radio, episode 87. I'm April Perry, here with Jill Adams. Coach Jill. Let's say hi, Jill. (laughs) Hi! (laughs) Today we're talking about how to map out a step-by-step plan for organizing your home. Now, we are part of a step-by-step home organizing party. While this is episode 87 of the podcast, this is actually lesson number four as we go through nine foundational lessons that help prepare you to build a command central and to be able to get everything totally organized. So we're going to go ahead and jump in today to help you to learn how you're going to map out this step-by-step plan. But if you want the links and you're thinking, hang on, I know I'm super excited about this. I want to be able to be a full part of the party. You're going to come sign up at learndobecome.com forward slash party. That way you can get all of the bonuses, all of the links, all the related materials. Plus we have a little worksheet that you can color in as you finish each of the steps, which will give you that sense of progress, a little dopamine burst as you get that colored in. It's going to be a lot of fun along the way. And then everything that we talk about today will be outlined at learndobecome.com forward slash slash episode 87. So we hope that you're listening, having fun, feeling inspired and engaged. And then when you want to take it to the next level, you go ahead and come to our website, learndobecome.com forward slash episode 87. We'll have a link to the party there, all of the awesome things we're going to talk about, but we're going to have a lot of fun. And I brought Jill on today. She's a coach inside our STEP program, Steps to Everyday Productivity. She's been doing this for years. And Jill has been a rock star in our community, sharing, I don't know, what win are you on right now? Like, 20 something? Uh, today, today is going to be, yeah, 22, actually. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> so even while I was like sick in bed for a couple of weeks, Jill is like every day, and she, Jill's even, even been going through some stuff too, but she's still just moving forward. Win today, win number three, win number four, five, six, on to number 22. And so she is just such a great example of doing this alongside working at home, taking care of kids, all the details of life. And she's doing this in a bite-sized way that is such a good example to all of us. So Jill, I'll just explain kind of the outcome vision, and then we're going to dive in and talk about how you did it so we can learn from you. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Okay. So first of all, the outcome vision for today's lesson is that you are going to have a prioritized list of everything that you want to get organized. Now, in our previous lessons, we talked about how we're going to actually create just a basic routine that's ideal for ourselves and our family. We talked about putting out the fires and creating more of a self-care plan. We talked about determining our highest value activities in lesson three. And now we're finally ready to create this itemized list that's prioritized, that's going to help us to be able to figure out, okay, what do I want to organize? Because if right now you're sitting in the middle of a home or an office or a bunch of projects and you feel like, I don't even know where to start, that's what I think we hear the most often from our community is, I don't even know where to start. So we're going to give you some really specific tips to do it. So what I want to do is just start interviewing Jill and let her share her story. And I don't even know how it's been going on behind the scenes. So I'm going to be learning here at the same time you are. And then as Jill concludes sharing how her family did it, then we'll just share a few step-by-step things that you can put into place and you can come get more on our website to help you be supported in the process. Okay. So Jill, I just want to turn it over to you and can you just kind of start out and tell us what you've been doing and then I'll ask clarifying questions. (laughs) Absolutely. So I think everybody was just, you know, kind of taken aback a little bit when we kind of first started this whole um, Corona quarantine. Um, You know, when it first started, we thought we were going to be off just one week, you know, like, okay, we've got the next week off, at least for our school locally here. And so it was just like, okay, how are we going to conquer this week? It was unexpected. And I'm like, you know what? this is going to be great because we, instead of going into like our busiest time of the year between travel baseball tournaments that started that very first weekend in April, um, through basically the end of June, instead of having that, we've kind of had a little bit of a reprieve and a step back and all the kids are home. But not only that, I mean, with everything canceled, even when we're home, you know, we don't have to run to baseball practice and to soccer practice and to track practice and to tennis lessons and all of those other things 
things that normally occupied our evenings as well. So, you know, first of all, like you said, I work from home, so that part wasn't too much of an adjustment, so to speak, but just um, the transition of all of us being home together um, is definitely a transition because you need to kind of readjust your mindset. Okay, you know, I'm used to having quiet space and, you know, (laughs) just complete control of my days, and now I have four children plus a husband who is also basically been quarantined from his job all in the same space and how are we going to make that work so yeah and you (laughs) have a family that's very active like you guys are a sports family so a lot of energy in the past has been let out on the field or on the court right (laughs) Now you've got all this energy. Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) So it was just kind of one of those things that it's just like, okay, like how are we going to like survive this? But it was also one of those times it's just like, okay, like I feel like I've been in survival mode in so many different points in my life. Like I didn't want it to be just survival mode. Like I wanted to be like, hey, you know, let's thrive during this time. Like it's scary. It's unknown. We aren't sure what's going to happen. But like, let's do something, you know, Mm -hmm. like I I just wanted it to be something that we could look back and be proud of our time together and, you know, just what we were able to accomplish as a family. And it's not just like our daily projects, you know, but like you said, I mean, like we're used to all being out and being social, having those outlets, you know, three of my kids are teenagers. My youngest one just turned 11. So we have a lot of hormones going on as well. (laughs) And, you know, like having to deal with just like having to be quarantined and, you know, just not having that outlet of normal everyday like practices and things where they could just kind of relieve stress. So that was kind of a component. And so I I think that I've just, um, to kind of go back to like step one in this whole entire process, to me, it was a mind sweep. Mm -hmm. Like I love that concept in the step program of doing a mind sweep of just all of those different things that are floating around in your brain and getting them out of your brain and onto paper or onto a digital system. Um, We both use and love Asana, right, April? Yeah. (laughs) And we'll have a video included with this on how to get started on Asana. That'll be part of our bonus with the party. Just want to throw that out because sometimes people get a little scared of a new technology. So, yes. Okay. So so did you do this on Asana or did you start out with paper? What did you do? Yes, I started out on Asana. And Mm -hmm. actually, this started, honestly, well before the quarantine started, because as those little ideas would pop in my head, like, oh, all the different things that I want to organize, even if it was as simple as, hey, reorganize the bathroom closet boom, I had a place for it to go because Mm -hmm. I have all of those thoughts, ideas, and projects organized into my asana. So I already have like a huge, it's kind of like a brain dump, you could also call it, you know, like the mind sweep. It's just a place to put all of those thoughts, ideas, feelings, projects, all of those things that you want to keep track of. I have a place for everything. And that just is magical (laughs) to start with. It is just so great to have a place to put all of those ideas. So I already had some ideas kind of started. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I first went. When I looked at this, you know, we had a week to start with. And I'm like, okay, what do we want to accomplish this week? And it was just like, oh, all the excitement started. (laughs) Like, like, oh, I have a list already started for this. (laughs) Yes. So anyway, and as we keep going along, it's been It's been so fun (laughs) because as we know now, um, it wasn't just one week that we had. It turned into two weeks and then that kind of turned into, you know, we're going to have this last through the end of April. So I have a whole list of things in Asana that we just keep adding to and I keep checking them off. And so I can see all the ones that we have completed along with all the new ideas that kind of keep popping up, you know, to kind of add to our list as far as that goes. And it's just, it's been great. So definitely um, for all of those people um, out there who are keeping track of all of those thoughts and ideas in your mind, I would so encourage you, whether you use a planner, if you love paper, that's great, um, or using a digital tool like Asana. um, And I know there's lots of other options out there as well. But just having that space to put down and brainstorm all of those ideas, that's definitely step number one and where we started. Okay, so you did this mind sweep and part of it was done over months probably (laughs) maybe even years where you I love how you said whenever something came into your mind you had a place to put it because while you couldn't do everything right then I mean you're a busy family you can't like clean every drawer and do every little project right that minute but you had them stored so when time opened up for you you knew where to go as a starter list but you also now could brainstorm and say has anything else come up that's a little bit more urgent or more important or just new something I hadn't written down before so then what was your criteria 
for deciding where to start? When you did think you just had one week, were you looking at maybe what was bothering you the most? Were you looking at the biggest projects? Were you looking at the ones maybe the children would be most excited about helping with? Like, What was the criteria that you used to decide what kind of bubbles up to the top? Yes. Great, great question. So when we just had that first week to start with, I was, my first question was like, how could we choose a project that is going to be most impactful for my kids? I wanted them to see the impact of their hard work. So, you know, for me, I'm like, oh, that bathroom closet has just been driving me crazy for like weeks and weeks and months and months, you know, but it didn't make it to the top of the list because that really had zero (laughs) impact on my kids. And let's be honest, like organizing a whole bathroom closet doesn't really (laughs) entice a bunch of teenagers. Right. Okay. So what we did um, was more Um, individual projects um, involving them. So our very first one was all of them cleaning out their rooms or in in their Mm, closets, like going through and kind of doing a sweep and a fresh start in each of their individual rooms. Because, you know, when you're stuck at home, you're going to be spending more time in your room. And just having a nice, fresh, clean start, I knew would really be impactful for them because they could really enjoy the fruits of their labor. So I think that's so So important when you're looking at projects and whatnot. And I kind of had that vision for, you know, like the week long of projects. And I really wanted them to be able to, you know, enjoy the process as well. It's like, you don't want your children to feel like they're like work slaves and, oh, I'm just here to do mom's mom's doing and mom's bidding or anything (laughs) like that. Like I just wanted them to enjoy and to see all the benefits of what it can feel like when you're done organizing. And I just loved all the comments that I heard from my kids too, because it's just, I mean, it, it was so random. They would be like, you know, my, um, my third child, Bo, he was just like, I love it. I know exactly where every shirt is. And I didn't, I haven't seen the shirt in months because I think kids just get stuck in like their same five shirts that they wear like over and over again. He's just like, he went through and he organized them in his own way. So he has like all of his colored shirts together and all this. And he's just like, this is awesome. I love it. And he's just like, oh, this shirt is so comfortable. Why haven't I been wearing this? (laughs) You know, they just had their own little like wins, you know, as they were going through it. My youngest, you know, he found a toy that he hadn't seen in forever. And it's just something that he's been able to play with now again. And he just like, mom, this really is fun, you know, because I know where everything is now. And, you know, so just hearing those comments and having them have that win, um, for that initial project, um, it it was a, it, it worked out really well for us. Okay. I love that. And I pulled up our Facebook group. We have a step mastery, like a private Facebook group for our program where Jill has been posting all of her wins. And I just did a search Jill Adams in the group and I'm seeing here's our (laughs) win number 14. Here's number 11. Here's this, here's that. I mean, I can share some of the things that I'm seeing in here, but I'd love to just give our listeners and our viewers, we have this on video as well, to be able to understand, but I'd love to get an idea of the scope of what you were doing. Because you weren't just organizing kids' closets, your closet, bathroom closets. You were doing some major work. Like one of my favorite is watching the fence come down where you attached was it a rope <laughs> or a chain to your car and like pulled out a fence post. I mean, you were doing – so tell me about that real quick. <laughs> just like some major out, <laughs> outdoor work too, right? Yes, yes. So, oh my goodness, we have done so many things indoor and outdoor. I know that first week, one of our other big ones to start off with was organizing the refrigerator and the pantry as well. So again, just the kids knew where everything was and they knew where it was supposed to go because I feel like things can kind of get out of disorder really, really quickly. So having their help, just kind of seeing where all of those things um, go, it -hmm. just helps to keep things nice and clean moving forward. Um, But yeah, my um, husband and I, we kind of sat down with them and just kind of brainstormed some other bigger projects. And we had this... um, right behind our house, we have this like black Angus pasture. And so when we moved here, um, that was like 14 years ago. So we had little kids and the fence keeping in all of these cattle, um, was like a barbed wire fence. And so we had put up like this nice, pretty, like white vinyl fence. And, um, so that was just one of our first projects when we had first moved in, but over time, um, you know, the fence is just kind of broken down and just pieces have kind of, um, blown off. We get some pretty good wind storms, you know, 
know, through here and different things. And um, so anyway, um, it was just kind of broken and we have a fire pit out there. So one piece of the fence was a little bit warped. It just wasn't pretty anymore. Okay. <laughs> and we didn't really need to put in the money to like update it and, you know, put make it all like nice and pretty again. So um, the cattle actually are no longer there. Um, they have um, sold those. So it's just a beautiful like big pasture back mm. there. So anyway, um, we decided that we would just tear down the fence and sell all the like good pieces of the fence. Um, we have a good online garage sale site. So we were able to disassemble awesome. all the fence and sell and made a few hundred dollars off of um, all of this fence That's that we were awesome. able to sell and put into other projects. So yeah, my my sons were out there helping my husband and they had the ranger out there. So they used the toe straps and just, you know, kind of attached ta that to some fence post and pulled that in the concrete that they were cemented down in and just popped them right out. And the boys had so much fun. <laughs> okay, I love that. And I love that it was also something you didn't just think, oh, let's just tear it down and throw it away. You actually realized, hey, there could be some resale value here. Let's coordinate that. I love that. So, so smart. I'm also just looking at one of yours. Step one number three was you cleaned out your locker area, which we're going to need to put a picture of this on the uh, show notes page because it is so beautiful. And you had like 25 comments, everyone saying, I want an area just like that. It was beautiful. <laughs> but can you explain a little bit what those lockers are, how you set that up, and then what you did to organize that? Because this is brilliant if you have an active family. Yes, um, this was like a dream. <laughs> so it's been almost seven years ago now, which is hard to even imagine life before we had the whole locker area. So um, like April's pretty active family. All four of my kids are involved at least in one main sport, if not multiple sports throughout the year. Um, so we just have a lot of extra bags, a lot of extra shoes, um, just all of those different things. And as your children grow, it's like their shoes grow, their bags grow, their <laughs> everything grows, you know? So yeah. anyway, we were just kind of really hitting that area, um, about seven years ago. And, um, I originally had a spot that was about three feet wide um, where we kept like all of the shoes when all the kids would come in. So, I mean, you can imagine between six people in our family in one have, little Joel. three foot area. <laughs> oh, yes, my goodness. I get it. So instead of having like shoes, it's like the pile, you know, yeah. and I mean, it was just like the pile of shoes would just grow. And we tried baskets and different things and like some shelves and, um, you know, we kind of we we made it work, you know, so it wasn't just like a hideous eyesore or anything yeah. like that. But I mean, it was it needed some attention. So I went online and tried to do a search. I mean, I probably spent hours searching and looking at lockers and home organization and how to organize like coats and bags and just all of those different things and kind of came up with just this vision um, from all these different things that I had seen. Um, and so basically when you walk in from our garage, um, we have like a long hallway. And so when we remodeled, um, we kind of redid um, like our kitchen, dining room and an office. It was three di different rooms and we knocked down those two walls and made it like one big room and the hallway kind of leading into it. So we kind of took a little bit of space and knocked that hallway back a little bit and and built six individual lockers. At the bottom of each one is a drawer that pulls out, so everybody has their own space for their drawers. It can probably fit like six pairs of shoes probably for each person, so they're nice long drawers. Um, and then we have like three hooks in our lockers, so for bags, coats, book bags, things like that. And then above that, we have a little shelf with an outlet. So that way, everybody has a space and a place <laughs> to plug in all of their electronics. So whether it's a phone or, um, you know, their iPads for school or different things like that, we have charging stations right there so they're not laying all over the counters and things like that. And then at the, t at the top of each one, we just put a little um, basket that they could put different um, odds and end things kind of for, you know, hats or, you know, mittens, seasonal yeah. items, different things like that, just random um, things that they kind of want to keep near their locker. They kind of have a space where they can throw all of that. And it has been phenomenal. Um, it has been a total game changer for us. And um, yes, they can kind of get a little bit out of sorts, a few too many shoes put in the drawer. So uh, like everything, they just need to be cleaned out every now and again. Yeah. So that was another great project for us. So you pulled it all out. You said they wiped it all down. They just got everything streamlined, clear, ready, beautiful. I'm also seeing things like um, your fish tank that you cleaned out. <laughs> Had it been a while <laughs> since that would have been clean? Yes. Yes. So actually, I mean, it's kind of a it's funny, sad story. So when we redid um, this 
remodel seven years ago, um, the Christmas present um, for all of the kids was this fish tank. And so we have some friends of ours who have this like, they had like a little one that's maybe about, you know, like two feet wide, something like that. It kind of looks like a big picture frame. And they made theirs into a saltwater aquarium, but it actually hangs on the wall. And every time we would go over to our friend's house, our kids would just stare at the Uh fish and just, (laughs) they loved it so much. So anyway, their Christmas present that year was this fish tank, but we did ours. We kind of, we redid this like um, bar area, you know? So like whenever we have like family over and birthdays, it's just like where we put all the food on this like bar area. So right above it, instead of having Having like a big, you know, picture or something like that, we have this aquarium. So ours is, I'm not sure, maybe like three feet long. It's kind of like, just looks like a big kind of picture frame it's almost so too, or like a big <laughs> TV kind of. Uh-huh. Um, so anyway, we have had fish this whole entire time and it takes some um, definite cleaning and it's a little bit difficult because of how it's made. It's just got um, about a three inch slit on the top of it. And that's how you have to like stand up on the counter, reach over to clean it out. Like it is a process, like takes a few hours to clean it and it needs to be done once a month to keep your aquarium healthy. Well, we had gotten some new fish and I had um, an additive and um, the the additive have, have gone bad. And so we lost all of our fish and this was probably in, um, I want to say it was maybe in December or November. I can't quite remember. And I was just like, Oh, we lost our fish. I think I'm going to take a break from having fish for a little bit just because, (laughs) you know, it's just all the upkeep and everything. And I mean, it's still pretty, even if it doesn't have fish in it and just kept the water in it and still kept it running, um, but just took a little bit of a break. And I was just like, oh my goodness, this is a great opportunity to teach the kids because I would always do it while they were at school, you know, clean the fish tank and whatnot. So teach the kids the whole process of cleaning the tank. And so that was another great project for us. We cleaned the tank. And of course the celebration afterwards was we went and we bought new fish and they're all thriving and doing great. We also (laughs) got a couple snails. And so everybody's all excited again because we have fish and it's just, it's wonderful. Like a fish tank is just calming and so fun to watch. And so, yeah, so it was just, it was, um, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, so it's, it's, it was just a project again that just had kind of gotten pushed to the back burner because I need, I need, Knew I needed to go back, get it clean, kind of start from square one, get get it refilled, let it run for a few days, and then, you know, to get the fish and everything back in there. So it was it was fun. Yeah. And it was also um, during my son's um, birthday. So that was kind of a fun extra <laughs> surprise for him since he wasn't able to do much celebrating with the corona yeah. quarantine. You know, he loves his friends and just was bummed not being able to see them. So that was just another little fun perk that we were able to do together. Okay, this is awesome. I just want to maybe, can you just list maybe a few more of the projects just to give a general idea? I know there are more closets that you did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and closets have been a, a big one for sure. Um, I know we've already mentioned doing the kids' closets, um, but we also have a coat closet, um, again, where it just kind of it is where a lot of our art supplies get Um, kind of stuffed into. Um, If anybody has a random like sweatshirt, they don't want to like run it and put away, they'll throw that in the coat closet, (laughs) Um, just all kinds of things. So we, again, in in kind of the same simple process for each of these places that we like clean out, we take everything out, we wipe everything down or vacuum it out, depending on what the area is, like where, um, like the shoe drawers, for instance, of course, those get like little dirt crumbs and different things in them. So definitely vacuum that out first. And then we wipe everything down. I'm a big um, fan of Norwex where you just use water and basically one of their claws, you can wipe everything down and it, you know, absorbs all the bacteria and everything that might be in the area. So really simple wipe down of the area and then go through what we have organize it and only put back what we need um, in that space. So we um, applied that, like you said, to the lockers, to our coat closet. We also did um, like our cleaning closet, which holds like our vacuum, all our Norwex stuff, um, all of our cleaning sprays, um, paper towels, things like that. We did our bathroom closet. Um, we went through and sorted um, a lot of our manuals. Um, so like different things, um, you know, like manuals for power tools or kid items, sports items, um, anything for the pool, all of those things. I got all of those manuals sorted and put into binders. Um, we went through the kids' pictures, like from school pictures and sports pictures, mm-hmm. and have those all organized into their own binders, um, organized actually by like chronologically, <laughs> because before they were just kind of all stuffed in there and not necessarily 
put into a binder or they were just thrown into a big kind of dump ball I had for pictures, like a big bin. So we got all of those sorted through. Um, your we routines? Were able to, you updated your family routines? Yes, our family routine. So um, we kind of have routines for the school year and then routines for the summer. So we went through and kind of took some of our summer routines and kind of tweaked those um, because it's not truly like summer because they still have <laughs> e-learning going on. Yeah. So we definitely had to make sure that we were having plenty of time in there for studying and whatnot. So, yep, we all went together, kind of brainstormed, revamped our family routines. Um, we um, cleaned out some desk drawers. Um, we um, put new, um, I'm not even sure what you call them on the bottom of the chairs, those little, um, sliders oh, on yeah. the bottom of all your chairs in the kitchen. And we recovered, <laughs> um, some chairs in our kitchen. I mean, we just, uh, oh my gosh, I, I'm, I'm telling you, You've we did landscaping one day, um, we washed cars, um, we kind of revamped our meal planning too. Um, so made that just a much more simplified process than I had had it before. Um, and just, um, use some new tools to, um, kind of make that work a little bit easier for us. Um, cleaned out an outdoor shed. I, gosh, we've done so much. <laughs> and I, okay. Okay. So crazy. I have to pause it, now so people don't feel overwhelmed yeah. because I'm like envious. First of all, I need to say because you've done such a good job. But tell me, how did you keep the momentum going without feeling overwhelmed? Because there's a lot of decision making. Everything that you're talking about has sub steps to it. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, go clean the fish thing. You had like multiple steps that had to go into place to get all that done. Every closet, every shed, all the routines, there's discussions, there's decisions, there's sub projects. How did you keep a momentum without feeling like you were just exhausting yourself? Yeah, and that is a great question. Because, um, you know, when I look back and look at this list, um, I'm realizing now that that list before, I think it was a little bit more um, overwhelming in a way because in the back of my mind, I'm like, when? when, when, you know, because it was like, I had this list and it was growing and I was so thankful to have a place to put all of those thoughts and ideas and those projects. But almost at the same time, it's like, it breaks your heart in a way. Cause you're like, I, I'm not sure when we're going to get to any of these things because of our schedule and because of how busy our family life is. I mean, our weekends are busy. Our evenings are busy. You know, I mean, it's just when summer hits, it's back and forth, you know, to town for camps and different things. We don't, um, we live in an area where I have to drive the kids everywhere. And I do have one driver now, which is helpful, but you know, there's still a lot of back and forth. So just having that open space really wasn't, conducive to getting a lot of projects done like this. So, you know, a lot of people in our step program, you know, we could talk about having about seven to eight projects per month to focus on nothing more than that, because it could be too overwhelming. Well, for my family, we had like three projects per yeah, month. And that simple. was all we could do. Yeah, we had to keep it simple because there just honestly was not a lot of free time to tackle these projects. So to me, in a way, that was my motivation, because I'm like, Oh, Oh my gosh, because I've been asking myself that for like years. When are we going to do this? When are we going to do this? We have so much to do and so much I'd like to do. So in a way, it was like when this happened, I'm like, oh no, we are not going to get sad. We are not going to let this bring us down. We are going to take advantage because we don't ever have downtime. Yes. So it was like, and you know, I mean, especially with my kids. I mean, I have four able-bodied ready to help yeah. kids, you yeah. know? Um, so it was, it wasn't like I had to do it all. Yeah. You know, it was like we had four people going in and grabbing a handful of coats and pull them out of the closet. We yeah. had like cleaning out the shed. When you've got all a big group like that, it doesn't take as long as if you were just trying to tackle it yourself. So that okay, right there good point. was a huge factor. And what time of day did you do it? Cause I know you said there's still e-learning so, going on. There's still other stuff. When did you do it? Yeah. So these would all be in like the early evenings, late afternoons. So okay. kind of the way we structured our day is that everybody had like a set time. Okay. You need to be up by this time, meaning eating your breakfast, your morning chore is done. You're, you're ready to go for the day. Bed is made and here we go. So like by 10 AM every day, like everybody was in their focused learning time from like 10 to 12. Um, and a lot of teachers are doing like zoom calls kind of in that time frame as well. It seems like for most all yeah. of the classes, they mm -hmm. usually fall between like 10 and noon. So that worked out pretty well as far as having that like concentrated learning time. 
And then we would have lunch and um, another routine is having the kids help out now with being in charge of lunch every day because for work, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I, I feel like I've done a good job teaching my kids to be independent and, you know, knowing what their routines are so they can get themselves self-started so I can be in my office and working, you know, and getting a lot of things done all through the morning, take a quick break for lunch, come back, finish up a few things. And then I'm feeling good because work is caught up and at a good place that I can be engaged and spend that time with them in the afternoons. And then in, in the middle of the afternoon, they would all kind of have like their downtime, you know, yeah. whether it was like my older two had additional work. Um, and my younger two, um, I gave them kind of some extra things to do because they didn't quite have as much learning to do in the afternoons. So they were doing things like going outside and playing basketball. They, um, had to play catch for 30 minutes and baseball, you know, to just kind of keep each other active because they still have baseball seasons once this, hopefully once all this is done. (laughs) So they're still involved in more of those like athletic type things. So they were doing, um, some more, um, activities and just being outside and, um, just a couple other little things around the house that I had them help me with. And then that way, when we came together, um, we would, um, and sometimes we would do exercise first and sometimes we would do exercise like after our big family project. And my husband is the one who is in control of our, um, uh, boot camps, family boot camps, we call them, which have just been a lot of fun too. Like having all of us like work together and go through stations of like push ups and sit ups and doing stairs and lunges and just all these different things to kind of keep the kids active. But anyway, it worked out good just to kind of have that afternoon time because they felt productive. They'd done their schoolwork. I felt productive. My hel- husband felt productive because we'd done our work for the day. And so it was a good timing um, to kind of come together um, towards the end of the day before dinner and just get that one more <clears throat> piece of protein productivity built into our day. Like none of our projects have been a multi-day. Actually, we're getting ready to probably start one with our um, downstairs storage area. That one's probably going to be a multi-day one, but all of the other ones we've been able to accomplish in like two hours or less. Okay. Okay. So I think that's super helpful because sometimes when I see it, I'm thinking that would take me like 12 hours (laughs) to do all of that. Okay. So it was a couple hours in the afternoon. Did you put it on the calendar so they were all planned in advance or did you just decide that day? Okay. Here's what we're doing today. Um, We would usually just kind of discuss it in like our family, um, like a family meeting and just let the kids know, again, now that it's kind of, (laughs) we've stretched this out over the last several weeks, say, hey, upcoming this week, these are our family projects that we're going to be tackling just so they kind of knew ahead of time. And I wasn't quite sure how it would go as far as like attitudes and whatnot, you know, like if they would be like, Oh my goodness, you know? And of course there was some grumbling along the way. Like my children are not perfect by any (laughs) means, but, um, all in all, I mean, I have been really impressed with them and it's been so cute too, because, um, it was last week. My daughter was like, mom, we've been doing all this cleanup and all this stuff. And I just opened up this drawer and I'm like, Hmm, this drawer needs to go on the list because we need to clean this drawer out. It's just a little (laughs) bit too crazy. And we can barely shut it because the scissors keep popping out because it's overflowing. And I'm like, I love it. That's great. We'll do it tomorrow. (laughs) That is, you know, so it's like, they are just picking up on it. And just, I feel like their eyes are opening to seeing, I think just the benefits of having these nice, clean, clear spaces. Yes. So, and then uh, you've been using your step system to be able to organize the projects that would maybe come out of it, the sub projects, because this is a main reason why we hear people don't want to start something is because in the middle of it, they're going to realize, oh, shoot, we need to go return that to the store, or, oh, I need to go list that, or, oh, I need to take care of this task and that task and that task. And so did you find that it helped you to be able to extract the tasks from the projects and put them into your existing system? Yes, absolutely. So um, I've been um, involved in the STEP program. I'm trying to think now. Is it like five years, maybe? I'm trying to think. So, somewhere, somewhere <laughs> You've close been around teaching there. I, it I don't for know. a it's, long time, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it just feels like such a part of my life. I can't imagine life without <laughs> it, to be completely honest with you. Um, it That is exactly the truth right there. Because without the STEP system, you're exactly right. You wouldn't have a place and a space to put all of those little sub projects and things that need to happen. You know, as we were cleaning out a closet, we found a return that still needed to go back and things like that. So that immediately goes on to my context space next actions list. So, yeah. you know, it's not forgotten. And that way, you know that it's going to be able to be taken care of. It's nothing's going to slip through the cracks. You're not going to put it in another pile that's just going to get stuck back in the closet. <laughs> You're not opening you Pandora's box. Action. <laughs> Yes, you can take action on all of those smaller things. Mm -hmm. And once you have all of these areas like set up and organized, 
it's just so much easier as you continue to go through. It's almost like the snowball effect. So you start with something small and you organize that. Well, now that you have this closet organized and you know where the band-aids go and you know where the craft supplies go and you know where the glue sticks go and you know where the batteries go. And so as you're going through yes. and like pens and pencils, all those little things. So when you're cleaning out other areas, you know, like, oh, I've already done this. Like, I have a space for that. I have a place for that. And if you don't, then it can become a project. And you're like, hey, I need to set up a place where I can put my batteries or, yeah. you know, all of the, these electronics or different things like that. Oh, my goodness. That was one of um, another one of our big wins going through and sorting like all of our um, all of our electronics and our cords because you just don't realize how much they accumulate and they just seem to be tucked in every place and space in your home and yeah. drawers and kids rooms and all of these things. So we kind of have a new system and have all of those congregated now. So it's just, it's wonderful. And the step system is, has definitely been the key for me to just making sure again, that I don't get into overwhelm because that's not going to help my kids. And that's not going to yeah. help me getting into a stressful state by any means. Um, but just knowing that you have a place to go with all of your tasks and you have a place to go with all of your little sub projects that come out of, you know, whatever it is you may be tackling. Just having that allows your brain to just <sighs> like relax. And you then know, you can move on to your easy. next yeah. project because you don't have all these loose ends taking up your brain space, right? Because you're able to Absolutely. jump from outdoors to indoors to this closet to the routines to meals. And you don't feel like you just opened up 15 projects and now they're all just open <laughs> you're able to yeah. do a couple hours work seal it up put a little check mark on it you know and now you move on to the next one yes. so that probably helped keep your and momentum going Absolutely. And, you know, one thing that I love using Asana for, um, which again, it's a digital tool to kind of organize all of your projects, very easy to use, in my opinion. Um, but you can just drag and drop. So it's mm -hmm. just like, all the, I have all of these projects that we're doing kind of in an order in a list. But there's been a couple days where the weather has changed and it's been really beautiful. So we took a project that was kind of later down mm -hmm. on my list and we moved it up because we're like, oh, we're gonna have a beautiful day. <laughs> So we, yeah, so we did our outside projects. So I just took them and kind of dragged them up and then just checked those off. And it's just so easy to kind of reorganize them as you're going yes. along. So it's so easy, so non-stress um, and just um, works so well to just kind of have that flow. And it's just, there's no pressure. I mean, I don't have due dates on these or anything like that. It's yeah. just, I have this list and when we have the time, okay, here's the next project. This is what we're going to work on. And, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just very easy, a good flow for myself, for the family. And um, it's just, I'm I'm very thankful. It's just there's a lot of things that have been difficult, you know, during this quarantine and whatnot. But, you know, I'm just going to um, choose to focus on the positive that has come out of this for our family and just that little bit of extra downtime, having all of us together in one space, in one place for <laughs> days in a row. I mean, it's just mind blowing, honestly. I mean, and it's just, it is kind of a wake up call too, just that, gosh, is there anything else that we can, you know, that really isn't that important that we could eliminate from our schedule because it has been so nice to just reconnect and then to have fun after we're doing all of these projects too. You know, we, we do try to celebrate and, you know, find ways to do that too for all of our hard work. And, um, so it's just, it's really been nice, but ultimately, um, the, the one thing that I would say has been the huge factor in our success in this whole entire process is having that list. So again, whether you have mm -hmm. that mind sweep or you can kind of brainstorm all of those projects on paper or on a digital list, that is going to be your saving grace and is going to eliminate the overwhelm. I love it. Okay, so that leads us right into kind of bringing out our assignment for those of you who are here today with us. If you go to the show notes page, it's learndobecome.com forward slash episode 87. Go there. We'll have pictures. You can get even more inspired by all the awesome stuff that Jill has done. And then we have a few resources for you. So first of all, you'll have a link to where you can sign up for our party. So that's learndobecome.com forward slash party. We'll have that on the show notes page as well. But we're going to give you that link where you can sign up and then we'll have a uh, video for you that actually shows you how you could create an Asana project 
it's a free software. It's really easy to use. We'll show you how you can just set it up and be able to put your projects there. Or you could totally do something like a piece of poster board and post-it notes that have each project written on it. And then you can rearrange using post-it notes, or you could just do a list. I mean, we want it to be simple for you, but the outcome of this lesson is that you have at least a brainstorm, a mind sweep, of all the areas that you would like to organize, and then you generally prioritize them. And I love how Jill said, yeah, if the weather was great, we kind of switched it up. You can absolutely do that. If you don't feel like doing something one day, you could switch it up. This is not meant to be stressful. It's just meant to help give your brain order. And a lot of times the reason why people don't actually create these lists is because like you were saying, Jill, when you look at it and you feel kind of discouraged, like, well, it's never gonna happen. But what we're going to do is show you in the following lessons how you're actually going to be able to break them down. You're going to make them happen by keeping the next actions really simple and specific. We're going to show you how you can organize it so you're going to see that there is this momentum building. Because, yeah, if Jill makes a list of 40 things she wants to organize and then gets zero of them done, she's going to feel pretty discouraged. But if she's noticing every day she's knocking out I know, a project or another project the next day, another one the next day, then it gives you a new feeling of hope, right? Like when you write it down, you know it's going to happen at some point. So you don't feel like that feeling of discouragement. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I think that that is so key too. It's just finding that way and in, in choosing those projects that can serve you and your family immediately, you know, like with starting with ours, you know, with our, with our children and involving those um, spaces and places that we were going to be spending a lot of time in. Mm -hmm. I think that was really key and really helpful in um, getting us on the path of success for all of these other projects that we were able to accomplish that snowball starting with those things where they could really engage in and, appreciate, you know, even with the refrigerator, they'd open it up and they'd be like, wow, this looks so nice. <laughs> you know, and for like a teenager to say that, I'm like, okay, that's, that's meaning something right there, you know, but um, just to kind of build on that momentum. So whatever it is that you are looking at, like, to ask yourself that question, you know, what is going to be the most impactful for myself and my family out of all of these projects I could choose? Like, what are we going to, you know, whether it's a place in your home that you use every day or, you know, just something that is going to be the most impactful for you and your family. That's definitely where I would start there because that initial momentum is really going to spur on more and more momentum to tackle the projects coming along in the future. So I know you can do it. <laughs> so well said. Thanks so much, Jill. All right, everybody come visit us on our episode 87 page. We're so grateful to have you with us and grateful to have you as part of our step-by-step -step home organizing party. <laughs> so we'll see you soon at learndobecome.com.